Well, I'm going to speak to, to about John Perry, but it is not exactly a talk about John Perry. It's just a talk about how to defend the essential indexical. Uh, my point here, uh, do you have handout? I stick to the handout, it's an old habit. So, as probably you know, it's, it's uh, um, a recent attack on the essential indexical by Kaplan and Dever in their book, The Inessential Indexical. I want to challenge this attack, uh, but let me explain first because, because there, there, indeed, there are many replies to Kaplan and Dever's book. And I want to challenge a specific point of the book, not the whole book. So, the general point Kaplan and Dever tried to do, try to, 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 to make, excuse me, is to show that there, there is a way to explain away indexical. Indexicals are not crucial for are crucial for nothing. Uh, uh, cases of essential indexicality are just cases of opacity. That is failure of substitution salva veritate. That's the general point of the book. And if if you know the book, you know that 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 any single chapter is against some specific point of the philosophical orthodoxy concerning the essential indexical. That's the general strategy. But uh, th this, this, this explains why you, you can find um, replies such as based on self-knowledge, the metaphysics of empathy, the structure of psychological explanation of action, the role of intentions qua mental states, and even the validity of practical inferences leading to intentional action. All these replies are uh, concerned with the specific points of the, of the whole book. But in chapter four, there, there is a kind of, uh, there is a, an explanation, a semantic explanation of, of the attack. And I want to, 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 to challenge that explanation. So I want to challenge the, 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 I want to show some difficulties of Kaplan endeavors semantic deflationism concerning indexicals. That's the, the, the main point of the talk. So, in a way, their, their point against um, Perry is a, a point against Frege. And this is the, the general strategy in, 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 the, in, in, in the chapter four. So, they try to, to convince you that this problem about indexicality, it's just a natural outcome of, the, of Frigeanism. Frigeanism concerning uh, naming and, and descriptions, are, or descriptivism, as they call it, uh, is the problem uh, of, for Frege and for Perry too, because the same problems which you can point to, 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 to Frege, you can, you can point to Perry also. So uh, I, I want to, to make first their point, trying to, to show why, what's, what's wrong with, with, uh, with, uh, with Perry. And then I want to claim that there is a, an option to defend essential indexicality. So in a way, Every single problem about the essential indexical is a problem for Frege, according to Kaplan and Dever. And uh, for, uh, in order to claim that, they defend the view that there is a kind of semantic receipt to produce uh, a counterexample to essential indexicality. This receipt goes like follows. Perry's and others famous examples of indexicality are just instances of Frege phosphorus against Hesperus cases. That's uh, one of the claims. The second claim of Kaplan and Dever is the indexicality issue only arises because of how the Phrygian apparatus explains these examples. So, if this is so, Perry reasons against Frege on demonstratives 
are just instances of Kripke's reasons against Frege's descriptive view of naming and reference. That's the, the general point, it's kind of translation. If you, if you show that, that there is a problem with Frege and you can translate every Perry case into a, free, a Frege case, you must prove, or you, you, are, uh, you, you are almost sure that the problem is with Frege and not with indexical. That, that's the, the, the point of Kaplan and Dever. And one, one way to see the, their strategy working is uh, the way in which they claim to deflate indexicality just by discussing Fregean versions of uh, indexicality. In this case, you have three ways of discussing indexicality, the, the point that indexicals are special. Indexicality is just the point that indexicals are somehow special. And there is a way to, to, to attack this view, but the way uh, Kaplan and Dever uh, try, to, 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 uh, try to, 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 to convince you that indexical is, is, is uh, shallow, is by pointing problems in the Phrygian diagnostic, excuse me, Phrygian diagnostic distinctiveness. And this is the point, within a Phrygian framework, the explanation, theoretical account of opacity for names can't be extended to indexicals. So, if this is so, only by, the, by discussing the Phrygian case, you can also uh, dismiss diagnostic distinctiveness, which is both and motivational distinctiveness. It's sufficient to discuss all the cases of distinctiveness just to point the shortcomings of Phrygian versions of diagnostic distinctiveness. That's, that's the general point of, 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 the, of chapter four. And this point is supported by analogical argument. And the argument goes like this. Remember the first paragraph of the essential indexical. This is the, 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 the example here. And then find a version, a Phrygian version of the example. If you can translate everything in the first version into the second version, the point is, is proof. It's just the, as simple as that. Uh, you, you, there is nothing lost in translation in this case. So I, I uh, put in the handout the two versions, the first is the, the original version, the indexical messy shopper, the second is the Phrygian version with a Clark Kent Superman uh, version of, of, uh, the, the, of, of, uh, of the story of the supermarket. And from this point of view, Kaplan and Dever try to, try to convince you that the point you can make about all the points you can make about, about Fregean version, you can make also about the indexical version. That's, that's, all. that's all. So, in a way, indexical messy shopper is crucial to, to establish a diagnostic distinctiveness only if Fregeanism is assumed. This, this is Kaplan and Dever, it's not, not my position, it is the, their position. Because you can suppose one, the sense of I determines John Perry as referent, this is Frege. The second is an obvious fact. The reference of I shifts uh, with context. This is a, an, an obvious claim. And the third is another Frege principle. Sense doesn't shift with context. If, if, you, if you take the three theses together, Oh, it's, it's almost ine inevitable to, to, to find an inconsistency. This is the, the, the way in which they claim that the problem is a problem for Phrygians, only for Phrygians. Because how Frege or how the, the Phrygian apparatus explains the problem with indexicals. But in a way, this is a general problem, is how the Phrygian explains the cases with names. So it's, 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 a, it's a kind of assimilation, theoretical assimilation of indexicals to names through Fregeanism. And once you, 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 you notice that, that the, the problem is about Fregeanism, there is a, an interest, 
Well, there's a kind of interesting point in, in, for Kappel and Endeavor, at least, is that the same reasons you can find in Kripke against Frege are reasons you can have against Perry. It's the same. So, uh, the problem with one and three, one through three, it's that there are cases of general problems for Frege. The first is a kind of misdescription problem, Kripke's misdescription problem, uh, which is uh, common to any designator. It's not, pro it's not a problem about name, uh, indexical, it's about names also, but let me explain it like this. Perry uses designator I to refer to himself without having in mind any information which uniquely identifies the referent of I. This is a, a version of Kripke's misdescription problem. I, I'm, I'm speaking of, uh, like Kaplan and Dever. That, that's the way they put the, the point. And the second is an example of, of Kripke's ignorance problem. If the sense of I could be expressed using the shopper with the torn sack in the cart, the judgment, I am the shopper with the torn, cart, torn sack in the cart, would be true in virtue of the meaning of I. But the last sentence expresses an empirical truth Perry discovered when he perceived the torn sack was in his cart. So, in a way, there are well known cases of Kripke against Frege, and by the translation, argument, the analogical argument, you can say everything you say at the beginning, now with the indexical in the middle. That, that's the, the, the general point. So Kripke's argument show descriptivism is hopeless. So FDD is, is in any case false, but this has nothing to do with indexicals. That's a Kaplan endeavor official dog, uh, uh, attack against the essential indexical. So, the first time I read the book, it didn't convince me that the cases are similar. The cases aren't similar, in my opinion. I mean, name cases and indexical cases. And, 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 and the point is, is about why this is connected with Frigianism or not. In my opinion, you can give a complete non Phrygian explanation of opacity with attitudes, with names, which you cannot apply to indexicals. That's the point. That's the point of, of, the, of the rest of the talk. I, I want to, sh to, 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 to show that there is a way to find a non Phrygian version of opacity, at the same time to claim that this version of opacity is not you cannot use this version of opacity to explain indexicals. That's my point. If this is so, I think that the problem is a real problem. If a problem is a problem, once you abandon, abandon, I, I don't know, a theoretical framework, it's because it's a real problem. And that's my point concerning indexical. There is a real problem, and it has little to do with uh, Fregeanism. That's my point. So, first, I want to claim what is to be a good non Fregean. What is to be like? To be a good non Fregean like me, for example. The point is that Frege's descriptivism is just a tool to show a conceptual connection between reference and attitude. That's the general point. And Descriptivism, in a way, you can understood, uh, understand uh, descriptivism as saying that sense responsible for the content of epistemic attitudes determines or presents reference, whatever, well, different versions of the, of the, of the same principle. But the point is that the, the connection, at least in, in one standard interpretation of Frege, is from sense to reference. That's the normal way to understand Frege. Uh, Frege. But once you change the chip and, and go to the, to the you chip the, your mind and go to, to, to Kripke, there is no problem concerning the connection itself. The problem is the direction of the explanation. And it seems to me that Kripke tried, 
tries to, 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 to convince you that that first is reference and then is not sense but thought or something like that. And that's the way it works within a non Phrygian uh, framework. But the connection is important. The connection, you, you cannot have Kripke without having some problem about the connection between reference and belief or thought. It's different, but it is there. That's, that's my point. So, Kripke's non-descriptivist story of reference, I, I'm not claiming here to have a theory, I'm, I'm speaking like Kripke, I don't have a theory, I only have a story, a general story about how reference, well, this is the way. Kripke's non-descriptivist story of reference is that there is no need for a cognitive fixed sense presenting put at it referent to understand reference as a semantic category. You don't need cognitive fix to have reference, but reference and thought must be somehow connected. That's another point, important point. Let me, let me read a, a crucial passage of, of naming a necessity, the, the foreword. My view that the English sentence Hesphorus is phosphorus could sometimes be used to raise an empirical issue, while Hesperus is Hesperus could not, shows that I do not treat the sentences as interchangeable. Further, it indicates that the mode of fixing the reference is relevant to our epistemic, epistemic attitude toward the sense expresses. This is quite important. The connection is there. It's only that the, the, direction of, or, or the direction of fit is different, but, but the connection is there. How this relates to the question, what propositions are expressed by these sentences? Whether these propositions are objects of knowledge and belief, and in general, how to treat names in epistemic context are vexing questions. I have no official doctrine concerning them, and in fact, I am unsure that the apparatus of propositions does not break down in this area. This does not break down in this area is a clear suggestion, reference, connection with puzzle about belief. That's, that's one of the main theses in a puzzle about belief. Probably propositions are not useful to understand belief. That's one of the things one can, one can conclude for, uh, from, from a puzzle about belief. So, from this passage, I want to stress two points. non Phrygian point. First, there is a concern about the impact reference has on attitude. A concern which I want to explain by using a principle fix. The principle fix is important in my talk. And second, there is a bar against the traditional, that is, Phrygian explanation of this link, this connection, in terms of propositions. That's the well-known Peter's puzzle or a puzzle about belief. I, I want to use Peter's puzzle because there is only one ling language and, and I need only one language. I, I don't need tr translation from my point, but it's Peter's puzzle. So, principle fix dictates that the mode of fixing the reference of the signator D is relevant to our epistemic attitudes as to sentences featuring D. So the mode of fixing reference is important for thought. That's, that's the, the principle fix, but the, the, the connection is in, in the opposite direction of Frege's connection. Mm, if you think about fix for names, you can say that language users learn names from other people in their linguistic communities through associated descriptions, which serve to fix the reference. That's the complete Kripke's history. <coughs> These modes of fixing the reference are connected somehow with a speaker's beliefs. That's uh, the general point. Suppose now I try to explain how they are connected, and we have Peter's puzzle to do that work. Suppose Peter learned the name Paderewski with different identifications of the same referent. 
Those identifications are possible answers to the question, who? That's important for my point of view. So, if those uh, uh, questions are important, it's because Peter's propensity to accept or reject some, predicate, some predicates to apply, for example, to Paderewski, is grounded in the question who, in a way. And I try to, to, to show that this way is important for producing the puzzle. So, our, um, suppose on occasion one, the reference of Paderewski comes with identif uh, the identification of the referent as a great pianist. So, in this connection, you can say, who, who Paderewski, the great pianist. But this, this connection is important because, in a way, explains why you are so prone, or Peter is so prone, to apply had musical talent to this person as a, as a predicate. Had a musical talent is, I don't know, naturally connect with being a great pianist, in a way. It's normal to think that the same person who is a great pianist had musical talent, or has musical talent. Suppose in another occasion, which is the, the, same, the, same, uh, is the same example, the reference of Paderewski is fixed as a famous politician. In this case, you, can, you have another way of fixing the referent, another possible answer to the question who, and of course, another kind of propensity, this, this time to reject the application of the predicate having musical talent. And this explains how, how, do, you, how do you, how you can have both ways. You can have Paderewski had musical talent in one occasion, and then you can have Paderewski had no musical talent in another occasion. And the same point goes only because of the way in which the referent was fixed in, 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 in any of these occasions. That's, my, that, that's, Padres, uh, that's uh, um, puzzle about belief in, in, without translation, because I, I don't need translation for this point. Um, now, you can think of, 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 um, of Peter as holding two contradictory beliefs. The point is missing is important is the disputational principle of Kripke. So, now Peter can be portrayed as assenting to both sentences, but this produces a conflict in his attitude, according to principle disc. Because when you have this propensity to apply had musical talent, and then the other propensity to apply had no musical talent to Paderewski, you can have a way to grant assent. And grounding a saint, you can ground belief. That's uh, the, general, the general point of, of this potential principle. So from, Peter, from Peter's story, you can conclude that one, Peter believed that Paderewski had musical talent, and two, Peter believed that Paderewski had no musical talent. That's the puzzle. The puzzle is that you have two different ways of fixing the reference, which ground different ways different paths toward ascent. With different paths toward ascent, you, have, you can have conflicting beliefs. That's, that's the general puzzle. Um, but let me, let me remind you some, some important features of this version I, 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 I trying to, 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 to develop here. The opacity of names in the new story of reference can be seen as an output of the interaction of fix and disk. Fixing the reference and this quotational principle. That's the two principles I use. Given the multiple ways in which Peter fixed the reference of Paderewski, principle fix predicts some epistemic impact, which is reflected in his answers to the relevant who question. This impact is made explicit using this, this quotational principle. The multiple ways of fixing the reference affect Peter's ascent and consequently Peter's 
attitude as to sentences containing Paderewski. This is the non-Fregian explanation of opacity. Uh, we don't have substitution, we don't have senses, we only have modes of fixing the reference and these quotational principles. That's a, a minimal approach to opacity without any concession to, to the Fregian. So, I want to claim that there is a way to produce Paderewski-like versions of, Kripke's, of uh, Perry's story, but these stories are significantly different from Perry's original story. That's my point now. Suppose, well, first, consider Peter's puzzle is not a run-of-the-mill Frege case. For one, there is only one name involved and consequently no substitution here. And substitution is crucial for Fregeans, at least since Frege. <laughs> Frege is working within substitutional uh, context and, and, and he says so. Uh, he's completely explicit about uh, that. And the second point is that this quotation is not concerned with ungerade or, or gerade um, um, context. This quotation is not concerned with belief reports. We report in something, but with belief ascriptions. We are trying to figure out what is, what is, which is the belief um, Peter Holt holds. And not, we are not trying, excuse me, we are not trying to figure out what he said. We are not reporting, we are reporting nothing here. We are trying to, to, to figure out what is he believing, what is his belief. And this is important. Uh, I, th this is not mine, this is Kripke's indeed. Kripke says that they, 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 he has no concern about, about reports. The problem is ascription, ascription of belief, because the problem is about how to, how to know that someone or why he, someone, could hold, could, could hold some belief. That's the, the, the general point of, uh, in terms of reference, of course. Of course, that, that's the puzzle about belief. Uh, it's a puzzle about how to deal with these shortcomings between language and thought. But beginning with language and with reference, not only with, with language, but with reference. So. There is, a, there is a point important here, is that any, any, anything we say, we can say from this point of view, is not Phrygian. From now on, we are working within Kripke's framework. What is the explanation according uh, to Kripke of, non, of, of generic opacity? That's the point. The point is that Peter borrowed the reference of Paderewski from previous uses of the name. This is quite important here. At least, at least in, in, in a puzzle about belief, every use of the name is borrowed. So with the name, we borrow the referent. That's a communitarian reference, if you, if you like to, to the term. And communitarian reference, this way of taking someone, taking some name from someone, includes referential deference. It's a case which I, I, I like to call referring by deferring. This is the, a, a good way to put uh, the general Kripke, the general Kripkean explanation of, of, of the subject. In both contexts in which Peter acquired name, its reference was introduced to him accompanied by certain salient contextual properties. The accompanying descriptions only picked the contextually salient individual, but did not and cannot support any uniqueness claim. That's the difference with Frege, for example. There is no uniqueness here. There is only a way to pick some, some relevant uh, uh, some relevant object, some relevant per person, but there is no uniqueness here. That's a, an important point for, for Kripke. In referring by deferring, Peter 
did not perceive the belief conflict. That's important, that's why it's a puzzle. Given the way the name was introduced to him, given the way he learned the name, he didn't notice the belief conflict. And this is interesting. Because, because uh, Kripke points out uh, the, the, the idea that, that, that Peter can be on, uh, even, even a logician, in a, uh, quite rational being. But the point is that reference makes us dependent on other people by communicative chains. That's, that's the general point. Of, and it's, in a way, it's an anti-intellectualist view of reference as the complete version of Kripke on language is anti-intellectualist, it's Wittgensteinian in a sense. That's the way, we don't know, and most of the time we don't know exactly, but we can communicate, that's, that's the general point. And we can think and, and talk about an object without having this, this quite specific Phrygian senses. Okay, so, if, if you look at, at these cases, you, you can conclude that the opacity feature is built into the actual communicative function of names as devices by means of which speakers, we speakers, borrow the reference from previous uses. That's, that's the way it goes within Kirpke's uh, frame, framework. And, what is more important uh, to me is that absent substitution and descriptive contents associated with Paderewski, this cannot be FDD. This has nothing to do with Phrygian diagnostic distinctiveness, but motivational distinctiveness and diagnostic distinctiveness are still alive. I, I only gave a general argument against Phrygianism, a different way to understand the connection between thought and reference. But I didn't give an argument against any conceivable way of thinking about thought and reference. So in a way, the only point discussed till here is why we can understand things different, differently from Frege. And according to this explanation, the only way, the, the only thing I can, uh, I, I can claim is that FDD is inapplicable here. It's not, it's, 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 rule, it's ruled out. It's not on the table anymore. We, we must understand reference in, 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 in another setting. This, this, this is the general point. But the other point about how or why indexicals are special are alive. And I want, to, to, I want to, 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 to try an argument to show that MD and DD are grounded, are, are good options for a non Phrygian. So, suppose now I, I, I want to, to make a Paderewski like messy shopper. Suppose John Perry is shopping at his favorite supermarket with the infamous torn sack of sugar in his car. At some point, he hears someone on the other side of the aisle is speaking on the cell phone about a guy named John, who is almost obsessed with cleanliness, the kind of person, the, vo the voice says, who will never make a mess in a supermarket. As, in ter as it turns out, and unbeknownst to Perry, the guy speaking on the cell phone is one of his students, the st one student of Perry who is referring to the peculiar professor. So, John Perry hears John, and the associated description is John, the guy obsessed with cleanliness someone is speaking about on the phone. Given this way of fixing his, the reference of his own name, John Perry will be prone to assent to John is not making a mess because John is not the kind of person who, who would that in, 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 a, in a supermarket, would do that. As Perry keeps walking down the aisle, the trail of sugar becomes thicker and visible to the manager who is watching him on CCTV. 
Worried about the sugar spilling on the floor, the manager goes to the microphone and says, and says, excuse me, Mr. John, please rearrange the torn sack with sugar in the cart, which is spilling sugar on the floor. Perry keeps walking with the torn sack in his cart, looking for the messy shopper without noticing he is the reference of Mr. John. If you ask, if, if asked about who is being referred to on this context, Perry could respond, John the guy, John, the guy with the torn sack the manager is speaking about on the microphone. It's mainly because he is the same case, you can acquire the, uh, your own name without noticing. That's uh, the general point. But this you, can, you can't do with indexicals. That's my point. So, given this mode, the second mode of fixing the reference and the new contextual identification, he will be prone to ascend to John is making a mess. So, from three and four, using this quotation, it is possible to conclude John Perry believes that John is making a mess and John Perry believes that, Don, that, that John isn't making a mess. You can have both ways. And this is Paderewski puzzle with John Perry's own name. Within a, what is my point here? Within a causal historic explanation of naming, there should be no name, not even one's own name when one is using it, immune to examples such as Paderewski Messi Shopper. Names can always live a double life in a linguistic community. This, this is, this is the, the double life of names. The, the, double, li the double life of names, is, 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 it has to do with, with uh, different sources of information. You, you can always have a piece of information, but according to the, the, to the communicative change, this information is, every, is always partial. That's important. So, now, I want to, 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 to argue that indexical messy shopper is not like Paderewski messy shopper. To do that, first, I, before that, I, I, I must notice two problems with, with using this quotation and fix in, 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 with indexicals. The first is also noticed by, by Kripke himself when discussing the puzzle about belief. He says that he doesn't want to, to, to use indexical in sentence in, in the principle of this quotation, in sentence P, because uh, indexicals are ambiguous. And th there is a problem for this quotation. But it seems to me that this is not his, well, probably it doesn't matter, but this is not his opinion now, because he has a recent paper on the first person, person and it is kind of different the way in which, in which uh, indexicals and, and this quotation work together. But in any case, there is no ambiguity in the case of indexical messy shopper. It is not a case of ambiguity. It's only one context in which John Perry is aware of some fact. There is, there is no way, in my opinion, to claim that the problem is ambiguity. The problem is, is probably that indexicals, uh, uh, in, in, the indexical uh, is used in a way, always in the same way, and the problem is with information, not with, with ambiguity. There is not, there, this is not a case of linguistic ambiguity in, in a, the essential indexical, in my opinion. In order to, 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 to make a case of ambiguity, you must compare um, context one, that is indexical messy shopper, with another context in which I refers to, uh, to, to, to a different person. This is a case of ambiguity. Not, a, no, no, not, not EMS. EMS is, for me, it's a clear case in which the problem is not the different meaning I can acquire on context. This, this is kind of difficult to, for me, it's difficult to think that there is ambiguity here. But probably for you, it's normal. For me, it's kind of difficult to see how ambiguity plays a role in indexical messy shopper. But, I'm saying this because, because um, in any case, there is an important point here. Um, even if EMS is not a case of ambiguity, 
is an example of a rule of the common language Perry speaks, according to which he fixes the reference of I by means of the subject, something like the subject of the agent. This is the way in which uh, Kripke himself explains the first person. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm only trying to, to make uh, his point stronger. The rule determines the content expressed in this context by sentences 7 and 8 in the handout, so they can, can be proper instances of substitution for this quotation. So the rule provides you with a, with a solution for the, for the ambiguity each issue. Even when, when you have the rule, you can fix, in a sense, the content of both sentences. Uh, I was not the, shop, the shopper uh, I was trying to catch. I was the shopper I was trying to catch. The second point is how a rule of the common language, such as I, the, I is understood as the subject, is related to other modes of fixing the reference, like associated description, like a great pianist or a great uh, politician in, 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 in uh, example. Here I have only a suggestion because, because the, the issue is complicated because, because Kripke criticizes Kaplan and then it's difficult to see uh, how to give a Kripkean version of the story but it seems to me that there, there, is, there is a point of contact between, between Kripke and Kaplan. Uh, when you are trying to determine the referent of the indexical one does not depend upon previous uses of the expression. That's the rule. That, that's why we have a rule. That's a difference with names. You just use the rule, but the rule is, is a formal, uh, or, 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 or a, it's a way of fixing the reference, but without depending on, on, on other people, only on, on your knowledge of the language. That, that's, that's the general point with rules. This is not uh, the same with names, probably because there is no rule for names, but there is a rule for indexicals, at least. This is, the, this is, the, this is a tiny uh, portion of Kaplanism I want to use here. It's just, you don't, you don't rely on previous uses of I to understand I, in a way in which you must rely on previous uses of Thomas to understand Thomas. That's, that's my, my general point. So, if this is so, they're not accompanied by contextual identification. I is not accompanied by contextual identifications of their, of their referent. And there is no referring by deferring in this case, exactly because it's not dependent upon previous uses of the, of the designator, in this case, I. So, a consequence of the rule for I is that in indexical messy shopper, the referent is introduced as a kind of parameter for any predicate. And well, th this, is, this is probably the most difficult part for me, but, but there is a suggestion in basically in, in Wittgenstein, both in the Tractatus and in, in the Brown book, when she speaks about Bragg disease, and he says that there is a use as index and a use as an argument. And the use as index is why I call a parametric use because the question who is, who is being referred to is not, is not important in this case. That's what I want to say. Uh, that's why I call parametric application of predicate. The question who is ruled out. That's the, that's the only thing I, I want to to stress about the use of I. When you use I, some questions are irrelevant. So this is a way to understand predicates as parametric. There is, and, and there is a reason for that. There is, a, there is only one agent who, who happens to be also the only possible subject of any relevant predicate. That's, that's what makes the essential indexical interesting. It's only one, of, one agent trying to figure out how to, how to fix the, the turn sack in his cart. That's, uh, but, but there is not 
there is no question about who is the, the agent. The, this question is obvious. The, the question is, is who is doing his agent? What is doing, excuse me, what is doing his agent, this agent? So, in order to, to, to show that point, let me, let me develop a little bit at the point of parametric predication because I, 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 I know this, this sounds strange and, and probably it's wrong, but it's an idea I, I, I have had, probably it is, works. Suppose a case like EMS1. Suppose John Perry is driving his car as before. Given the rule for I, the only context of use is the actual context of Perry's story. And the sole relevant question is about who was the shopper he was trying to catch. The issue of who was trying to catch the shopper is irrelevant to Perry. It's clear that he is trying to catch the shopper. The point is not, is not the, the point who is, 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 uh, is uh, the agent of the context is irrelevant. The point is what, is, what is he doing in this context? The issue of who was trying to cut the shopper is relevant to Perry. To see this, consider scenarios one and two, compatible, both compatible with IMS, indexical message shopper. Scenario one, John Perry says, I was not the shopper I was trying to catch. Who? Who else? I. I was not the shopper I was trying to catch. Second, scenario two. John Perry, I was the shopper I was trying to catch. Who? Who else? I. Both the, the affirmative and the negative uh, sentences have the same presupposition. It's only one agent who is working, who is, who is the only agent, the only relevant agent is John Perry is the, 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 the reference of I. And this is, for me, it seems interesting because both the negative and the affirmative sentences produce the same result. And this is different from, from, from Paderewski cases because in Paderewski cases you, can, you, you, you must have the musician and the politician. Here, the, the, the answer is only I. The same answer to contradictory questions. It's kind of, of funny, but this is the difference, the main difference. So, there is only one relevant context of use connected with I. And explanations of generic opacity grounded in distinct contextual identifications cannot be applied here. That's why, because there's only one context. One context of use. In, in occasion one and occasion two, you, you can claim that there are two contexts of use. But here, there's only one context of use with one agent. And the question is, he, if, if he is the shopper or not, but not if he is the agent of the context. That's, that's my, my, my main point. So, in a way, it's possible to show that Paderewski Messi shopper is quite different from indexical Messi shopper. And if this is so, diagnostic distinctiveness is grounded. Because there is a distinction, a clear distinction between cases of names and cases with indexicals. The explanations of, the, excuse me, the explanation of names cannot be extended to indexicals. That's, that's my, my first point. I, I'm, I'm saying, I, I, I said nothing about attitudes, but, but I, 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 I will say <laughs> in a moment. So, what about MD? How do indexicals and attitudes interact according from this new or this non Phrygian point of view? Well, according to Paderewski Messi Schopper, contextual identifications help to ground conflicting attitudes in language users. That's the way it goes. But there is no contextual identification in IMS1. There is no reason to suppose that any conflict between attitudes will arise. There is no conflict here. 
but there was a conflict in Paderewski cases. You, you, you have different sources of information and this is a kind of conflict because it, it, this, this diff the, the, the different sources of information can ground different attitudes and probably conflicting attitudes uh, toward the same subject. So, one nice feature of parametric predication is that the mode of fixing the reference of I has a deep impact in Perry's attitude. The question of who is trying to catch the shopper with the turn sack in the cart does not arise for him. It's not a good question, it's an irrelevant question in this context. So, a nice feature of these cases probably is that in order to ascend to eight, Perry must abandon in this context his previous ascent to seven. So EMS one is a Perry's change of heart, contrary to Paderewski Messi Chopper. So here we can say that the conflict is avoided by making ascending flexible. And this is the point about indexicals. Indexicals can make ascent flexible. Names cannot. This is the general point. So what I try to prove is that I encodes a, encodes a kind of dynamicity of assenting to sentences containing indexicals. And given this quotational principle, a more sensitive belief ascription based on sentences seven and eight may be John Perry came to believe he was the shopper he was trying to catch. If this is true, there are reasons for thinking that uh, indexicals interact with opaque context in a way that undercuts Kripke's puzzle by making ascent flexible while leaving content fixed, because the problem is not about content, the, the, the problem is about ascending. Uh, the rules for ascending with indexicals or the conditions for ascending with indexicals are more flexible. This is the only point. But this makes indexicals different from names. Uh, the rules with names are more fixed if there is a rule. Probably there is no rule, but, but in any case, the conditions for, with names are, are very, very, mm, in a way, static, are not so dynamic as, dynamic as, as, uh, as the ascending with indexicals. So I would say, that indexicals are, after all, unique. Because ascending with indexicals is different to ascending with names. This is my main point, my main point here. And, and it seems to me that, that, that to say that is not to endorse any kind of Freganism. It's just to say that that disputation and indexicals and Kripke's story of reference uh, provides you with a different version of ascent with using, uh, when using indexicals. That's, that's the main point. And this makes, this makes indexicals special. Thank you. discussing that, but trying to clarify what's going on in the uh, indexing and the different 
for some so, mm -hmm. so and I'm very happy with that. And I'm happy that it's not uh, a way of putting too much attention to these guys uh, instead of putting attention to to Paris or you know to, to the guys who defend the, the, the essentiality of the of the peculiarity of Mexico. So so well. Uh, I don't have, I have criticisms, I will tell you some more on that, I have questions. Uh, uh, um. So, for instance, at the beginning, uh, I don't know, I was, I was, uh, they say that John is, Perry is a Freudian, and then they attack Freudianism, I think John, but uh, John is not a Freudian, right? Yeah. So, so that's like, everything is misdirected in there. In their, um, the problem is right? Si. So, so, I don't know. Uh, so, question, and I would say that, on, on the, on, I mean, you used Kirkish ideas, but I think that all the Kirkish ideas you used it were also would be, you know, uh, any direct referentialist, uh, including John, very himself would, would agree. So, so, anyway, so I have some questions like, um, uh, some, something you mentioned at the beginning, and I think there is some um, critical thing on the matter, which is the problem of using propositions to <coughs> classify the concepts of assertions and beliefs. You mentioned, like, in passing, that Kirke at one point said that maybe propositions don't work. Yeah. And that's what's going on here, yeah. and explaining this. But then sort of you forget about that, right? I don't know, so my question yeah. was about that. I, I think that that's one of the problems. And I think that uh, in various papers in Freud and Democracy, it's yeah. already there. Yeah. It is as in Freud and it's saying the notion of proposition doesn't work. Yeah. Cannot do all the jobs that it's supposed to. So, so my, my first question is about that. Yeah. What do you think about that? Because yeah. no, that what do you think? One, one big issue in, in Kappel and Endeavor's book is about, um, about how to deal with the notion of content. This, uh, this is one of the issues. It seems to me that the problem is with assent, not with content. So, so in a way, we, can, we, we are not, it is not mandatory to discuss content but to discuss assent to make the point. And, and, and I, I, would, I, I, I would try to do that way. Because it, it seems to me that, 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 that the Kaplan endeavors, criticisms, uh, criticism concerning content are, are wrong. But, but in any case, the problem is not, is not this, uh, the, the, the notion of content, but the notion of, of, the, of the connection between thought and reference and it seems to me that assent is the, the, the crucial link there to explain differences between one and the other. That's, that's my, my main point. I, because, mainly because of Kripke, Kripke doesn't want to, to speak about propositions because uh, he says that probably they are not the good enough as tools in, 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 in semantic uh, Theorizing, but in my opinion, this is this this is right. I I, I don't want to to discuss content here because probably the the, 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 the issue is another. is 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 about how to connect reference and thought. And this for this ascent, uh, these quotational principles are far more useful. Even even I try to do this in this paper. I, I try to to use as as little as tools as possible. So it's a minimal, in, in a sense, I take Kripke, I take the basics of Kripke, and try to, to develop an argument to show that indexicals are important. By, by, but I, I didn't mention content very much because it seems to me that it's a kind of point of attack that I don't want to, to, to discuss. It's just assent. Assent is quite important and discutation. That's the main point to, to make a to make to, to for for my for my argument to run, I, I, I only need assent, in my opinion, and this quotation. With this, I can work. But but I, I agree with you that the, the point in Perry's article and, and probably in Castañeda is about content. It's, 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 it's a different point. 
And probably by, by trying to do that, um, I was trying to do is, I, I, I'm leaving aside some issues that, that at the time were not so important to me as the big issue that indexicals and names are different in, in a minimal, very minimal way. That's, that's why. Thank you very much for the talk. Uh, it's just a very simple, simple question, but I am struggling to understand why to determine the, the, the reference of I. One, what does it mean? One does not depend upon previous uses. So I don't yeah. see it clear. Yeah, because... because see the difference in which sense? Yeah, because, uh, in a, a, well, in, in a way, you, you, you can have a rule in my, well, that, that's the way I, 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 see, I see things, but probably it's wrong. In, in, in my view, uh, indexicals, given the rule, indexicals can fix the reference again and again and again and again and again, every time. That's a rule. Yeah. While in, with names, you must depend upon someone or on learning some name from someone. That's what I mean by previous uses. Uh, thinking, about, thinking about this idea of a referential sh chain and com a communicative uh, uh, interaction with others, indexicals can fix the reference again and again without, without depending on, 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 on learning the name from, from someone else. That's, that's my point. Okay. I was thinking that uh, there is no way for me to understand or learn the rule of I without having previous usage. Yeah. So uh, yeah, 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 but, but not in the same, in, not, not, not in the same sense, in the same sense, excuse me, to learn the name, to depend on all. There is no deferring by, uh, uh, referring by deferring in this case because only you, once you know the, the rule, the, 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 the rule applies once and again. And again, and again. This is a different phenomenon, probably. Please. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thank you. Where, where, one of the ways we tell the story when we make the distinction between the indexicals and the programming, pretty much like Kaplan, it seems to me, because Kaplan say if proper name of a character, they are an uninteresting character, like indexical are an interesting character. And with indexical, you fix certain right every time you use it, you put a different sign of the board, you have a proper name, you have a kind of differential use. And, uh, well, this seems pretty clear, but there is maybe one way uh, you could ask to attack uh, endeavor and uh, in Canada is because you mention uh, uh, Wittgenstein at some point, and it's interesting that we, but there is another aspect in Wittgenstein in, in the Brown book when Wittgenstein makes a distinction uh, two uses of I, the I as subject and the I as object. And it seems to me that for Catherine and Deva, uh, Argent, who trying to bring in Fregenism in areas of Fregenism, we understand the use of I as a kind of I as object. Mm -hmm. Not by in the essential indexical, but the I is understood as I as subject, subject as the agent is subject. But, but I get a, 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 a question which comes to my mind. You know, and maybe we could run a, a kind of a direct case with I as well. If we think about maybe a kind of split personality or schizophrenia. Oh, yeah. In this kind of case, I don't know, I have no clear idea, but maybe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I have two kind of, there are maybe two agents. Yeah. And who, mm -hmm. is from a, from a mind perspective. Yeah, 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 and that's true. Indeed, I, I, I discussed the, this paper with a, with a colleague, and uh, he's working in, on the same su subject and, and told me the same. Well, probably 
you have a problem because, because schizophrenia is a case in which you, ha you can have two subjects. And that's true, but the point is that I'm not sure about this. It's, schizophrenia is a condition, a health condition, while names are normal. And, and, and in a case, uh, it's uh, it probably, you can have the same case, but changing so much the situation, the, the circumstances, that, that probably is, is too general, the perspective to explain uh, the case. And that's, that's probably my concern about, about, because we don't say that, the, the, this, uh, well, there is a puzzle about names, but I don't know if this is a condition or, or it's a cognitive failure of our part of simply it's part of our nature to do. From a cognitive science viewpoint, when you say condition, for instance, like in the theory of science, when people, there's a cognitive scientist, a you can lose the capacity uh, to use a name Why you retain the capacity to use common noun. But all the information, you call the semantic information, you associate with your name is still there in your long-term memory, and you can't retrieve it. Not with the name, but if I show you the picture of okay. a famous guy, like example, with the power of the heart, you got all the... So it's kind of dissociation. Uh, why you think that's a cause? This also from a cognitive science viewpoint, there is a difference. You can not have this kind of... Uh, Probably, probably, it's essential. yeah, they're essential because <laughs> because you cannot lose uh, indexicals without losing so many things at, at once. Yeah, yeah, I agree with. Probably because we are the last words or the master will be there to discover it. Yeah, the child will use indexical for three or four years without losing. Yeah, and, and, and uh, as a part of this, this, um, this, this, this very research project, I worked with a psychologist, mm -hmm. in, but not in this paper, in another paper, trying to prove that, that to elicite conditions for indexicals in VP ellipses is quite interesting. And, and people do not make some mistakes. It's quite rare to, uh, they, they, change the, 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 indeed this is quite interesting because, because in one way to understand presuppositions and, and conditions for, 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 for uh, the ascribing uh, attitudes, it's more, it's easier to make the mistake. In a way, it, it takes uh, a little attention, and it. But with indexical, you pay a lot of attention, a lot of attention to, to the cases. So in a way, it's, 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 it's uh, f from a cognitive point of view, it's far more um, demanding to use indexicals. But you take care of. Of of them, you, you you don't you 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 don't make some mistakes. It's demanding, but it's the way we are. It's not it's not like in other cases in which you say this is too difficult for us to, to do. It's not it's not that way. It's it's demanding, but it's normal to do that way. And and this is quite nice because you don't some mis you don't do some mistakes when using indexicals. That's a, that's a, a good point. Thank you. Well, I have three, three questions. Uh, okay. Small, small question in there, I think. Um, one is about um, the presentation of the book, sometimes of the negation. Books. Yeah. For uh, example, Paderewski, I don't remember why one and two. I don't remember how quick it is the thing, but uh, as you put it, it sounded to me more natural to not to put that, that Peter believed that Paradise have no musical talent, 
that would have the propensity to to say that or something like that, but uh, the, just that there would be no belief at all about the musical talent of the politician, right? So, so true for me would be something like Peter doesn't believe that Pavelski had musical talent. Yeah. But yeah. so it's a uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't remember how tricky, but as you put it, coming to me more natural also to say that on occasion one. The guy would have a propensity to say Paderewski had musical talent, and Bude, in occasion too, wouldn't have that propensity. Not that we have the propensity of saying Paderewski had no musical talent, because there is nothing, as far as I can tell. Probably, probably. I, politicians I, not necessarily not having musical talent or something. I, right? So, but, but that's, that's very minor of mine. Um, the other thing, maybe more important, um, point three there. Uh, you, you emphasize that this quotation is concerned with belief ascriptions, not with belief reports. Yeah. And they say, okay, all right, but they are strongly linked. I mean, to give me the semantic of the truth conditions of belief reports, you have to tell me which are the conditions for the guy to have this belief. Right? So sometimes people make the distinction and say, well, I don't know. <laughs> Depends on, it's a matter of emphasis, but it's not such a big deal because you have to tell me what makes the report true, and for that you have to tell me a story about the guy's beliefs. Yeah, yeah. So, I don't know, I don't know, eh? maybe, maybe I'm wrong, maybe no, 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 it's no. important, this quotational thing, it's important to be about this and not the other, but well, I see. Yeah, but the, the, there is a reason for that. Yeah. So yeah. No, sorry. There's a reason for that. Uh, um, I I I I've, I try to avoid uh, any freganism, even even the idea that that reports are, are important for 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 belief. So that's why I try to to, to distinguish uh, reports from ascriptions uh, uh, because in a way, my 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 hunch here is to to do everything a uh, Kaplan endeavor say cannot be done using Kripke. <laughs> and and this is this is good because probably you, you don't accept any of 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 their argument against Perry. Not a single part. It's not about it's not about reports, it's about ascriptions. It's not about it's not about senses, it's about fixing the reference. That's that's mainly my point. But yeah. but it has to do the good your, your, both questions uh, 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 have, have to do with the way in which Kripke presents the case. It's not, it's not my way, but it's the way in which Kripke tries to avoid some problems. Uh, coming from the Fregeans, and, and he says, well, this is not Frege. This Frege is another problem. Now we are trying to, to explain the same facts so even for non freakians if you are going to give a theory of belief report, you have to, yeah. you need something. Yeah, but that, that's the belief. The justification belief. is in, in, in the dialectics of, 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 yeah. of uh, okay. avoiding okay. Kripke as well. That's why the substitution so is not concerned. We may think if we remember well, we have to make, make this kind of shortcut which kind of sort of undermine the beauty of the land of men. Then the final and then the yeah, yeah. and then maybe we can come later. Uh, uh, examples five and six. 
Yeah. Again, I don't know what's the English language, but uh, there's a little reference here that I was thinking, well, someone talks about uh, attributive uses of names, not only descriptions, right? To donor and other. So 536, the way you, you, you uh, presented them, I thought that these were cases in which the speaker is not using John uh, to refer to anyone. It's just a case of attributive uh, use of John, because it seems to me that the description would be better to say, well, John Perry believes that someone is making a mess. Right? That for sure. And then, in five, believes that whoever is making a mess uh, is named, is John. Is named, is named. Okay. And on the other one, he doesn't think, again, I would put the negation on the, on the other side. It's not that uh, John is not making a mess, but he thinks, he, he believes that someone is making a mess and believes that it's not Jim. I mean, his name is not John. Right? Yeah. So, so again, well, maybe it's not attributive, but you apply the who, whoever it is, it works, it seems, and he doesn't have anyone specifically in mind. Uh, so, yeah. So yeah, if someone is making a match and that has a name or it doesn't have a name, which is different from five and six. Yeah, one way. So yeah. it's not referenced there. It's yeah, 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 yeah. So, so I, don't know. Not, yeah. I don't know, again, minor point, maybe it doesn't affect your main yeah. point, that's for sure. So right. one, another way to pronounce the difference here is if you have agents, John Perry believe that agent is making a mess, or John Perry yeah. believe that agent is making a mess. And if you do need someone, according to me, you would implicitly be in the quotation terms. Oh, yeah, and I have the final, final thing. Yeah. And nine, and nine, I would, um, uh, nine, it's, that's ambiguous, I think, the he, right? Uh, okay. If you intend, you need a, a how this is, uh, he himself, right? None of these. Yeah. Castaneda. Castaneda. He was star, in an indicator. Right? Yeah. Star, yeah. Star. Otherwise, that's still well. Yeah. Maybe nine is yeah. still one You're of the right. places that John. He himself. Yeah. yeah. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. I agree. And the other uh, about uh, attributive uses, I, I, the point I, I want to make is that mistakes with names, these kind of mistakes are quite common. And if you want to, to, to buy the, the, the causal historical uh, idea of, of Kripke, this, is, this can be a case of, 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 uh, um, of learning a name, which is not so demanding in a way. It's, it's quite cheap. And, and this is the, the main point. The, the main point is that you can have, a, to learn a name is quite cheap. But to use an indexical is expensive and, and, and it takes some, I don't know, I don't know about, I don't know if, if I would say consciousness, but at least attention is it's a, a kind of different. That, that's the main point, but I, I agree with you that the case can be described in, in a different way to show that, that there is, there is a, a general proposition expressed there, like someone or something like that. The point is that, that, I, that that's my version of, 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 uh, of a Perry's story without indexicals. But the point is that Perry learned the name in, because to learn the name is quite cheap. And, and being quite cheap, is easily, it can easily ground belief conflict. That's. Uh, well, well, go ahead. That yeah. learned the name of the Bai Kaplan story, right? He already knew the name John. Yeah. So he's not learning a name when he. he well, I mean, he, well, kind of start figuring out, oh, it's a John, oh. Uh, yeah, oh, but like me. Huh? But no, remember, no, it's not learning remember the name because uh, according, I don't know Kripke's version, but Kripke. I know Kaplan would say that there is a name for each variable, right? Yeah. Better name. But there are, in this case, not learning a new name because it is 
the reference is him. Yeah, but, but part, it's not learning the language. <laughs> But remember, remember that, that in, in the Paderewski case, you learn the, the same name twice. It's, it's, it's kind of, of or you, it, but that's the idea of Paderewski case. And, and I was trying to, to develop this idea. Even, yeah, yeah, yeah. Naming the necessity at some point is saying, can you imagine a scenario when you got to different names, Aristotle, not the one ah, yeah. and the philosopher. Even in the case when the same guy is baptized twice and you've got two different uh, communicative chains, you will be able to two different names. Did they say that? In, the, in, in a footnote, I don't remember the one, but he said textually that, you know, in naming in necessity. So, your same object? You, your to mother him. calls you Eros. Independently, your father comes to say you're going to be Eros. But there are, two different, there are two different names. It's a different uh, causal chain, and for Pity, it will be two different names. Say that. Well, whether it's consistent with what you say, everything, everywhere, has another story, but you said that. If you might like that, would. Would. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure. It, the, the point uh, with the with um, puzzle about belief is that it's not about um, general moda modalities, it's about epistemic modalities. And, and for Kripke, that's why I, I told you that, that I, I didn't want to speak about propositions, because mm -hmm. to speak about propositions in, within Kripke's view is to speak about, to speak about general modalities, or, or uh, that is, uh, athletic mod modalities. And, but the problem in, in a puzzle about belief is about epistemic modalities. And one, one landmark of, of Kripke is to try to, 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 to separate epistemic modalities from, from, I don't know, metaphysic modalities. And this is, this is why I, I didn't talk at all about propositions, because propositions in Kripke are that way. It's, it's, the, the point we, the, I, I, I referred uh, to is about why some th theories about uh, indexicals uh, can explain the fact that, uh, in a way, it's more expensive to accommodate of all the information according to, to the indexicals than to leave the inf this information like that. It's just, just in, a way, in a cognitive way. That's the, uh, the point is that you must, uh, for example, uh, uh, but, but that's why. Uh, in, in, in the examples, uh, uh, we, we try to, 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 to explain, for example, uh, with, with my colleague, uh, there are two agents, mm -hmm. two eyes. And this is quite expensive in a way. <laughs> uh, for example, I, I intend to go to dinner. And you say, I intend that too. So you, you have two planning in, in agents working with indexicals, and some theories say that it's 
too expensive to accommodate all this information given that there are two agents. In, in, in Kaplan history, there is always one agent, at least in, in the official version of demonstratives. Uh, but this has to do with the complexity, the logical complexity and all this stuff. But in these cases of two agents, if you think about it in terms of, of I don't know, of terms of, of, of cognitive ar architecture, it's, it's kind of difficult to explain why you must accommodate, uh, accommodate everything to understand the second indexical. But that's the way it works. You, you understand that, well, I, need, I intend that too. I intend to go to dinner. I, with, this is not to say that I intend that you go to dinner. That, that's work. That, that's, that's a mistake. A, a clear mistake, but what is, what is more interesting is that almost it's quite certain that people don't understand a intention attribu attributions like this. Like I understand, I, I intend that you go to the supermarket. That's 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 a, that's a crazy way to understand someone else's intention. But in a way, that, that, that's, why, that, that's how many, many people working in, in, in the semantic of, of, uh, of uh, attributions uh, explain those cases. It's weird. So it, in, in a way, it's easier to, 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 to make the mistake, but nobody does. That's inter interesting. So it's 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 it, 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 because you must understand that there are a planning agent, another planning agent, and then you must accommodate all this information within a single framework. That's why why what I mean by saying that it's kind of expensive. expensive. In, in the informational and in the cognitive. Yeah 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. If you like it, I, I, don't, I don't believe that. I, well, I'm not sure about that. But the point is easier because it's, in a way, it's communicative. It's only communicative. The point is about how to explain you understand agency, in a way. I, 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 it's crucial to understand agency. And that's the main point. The point about Privilege access is, is, is a difficult point, but it seems to me that you don't need to make this point now, at this, at this stage of the, of the discussion, in my opinion. You must, you must go with indexicals and rules, and then at some point say something about privilege uh, access to, some, to something. Here, in, in this paper, I didn't want to mention it. Because this is the stalking horse of, of, of Kaplan's endeavor. And I don't need that to explain uh, the fact that indexicals are special. But indexicals can be quite special too. Even, even for, 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 for privilege access on, on all this stuff. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah? Thank you very much.